Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a realistic reflection in Photoshop. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's episode, we got something super cool for you. We're gonna be creating a reflection in Photoshop, but not only that, we're actually gonna make it look like someone is floating over top of the water. And we're gonna use the ripples in the water from the original image to distort the reflection. We got some awesome tools for you in a great episode. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here in Photoshop, we're gonna go ahead and open up our sample images. We have our background, and then I went ahead and cut out our subject already. And you can actually download these on flurn.com. Just follow the link in the description right down below. That way you can follow along with this tutorial. Now we did all the hard work cutting our subject out. So all we have to do is get our subject onto the background. We're gonna use our move tool and click and drag our subject right to the background. And look at that, ooh, I'm flying. This is the most fun I've had in my life. I want to make it look like our subject is like floating right above this little ripple. Like maybe they came out of that water and magically have dry clothes. But it's not going to look anywhere near realistic until we put some sort of reflection in the water. You can see the mountains are reflected in the water and they are, you know, like the ripples in the water are kind of like transforming the reflection from anything that touches it. So we're going to use a filter. It's called displacement, also known as displacement maps. What this does is it takes information from the image itself and then based on the light and the dark information, it will actually displace your image either vertically or horizontally and make it look like it's interacting with that background. It's such a cool technique. So in order to use our displacement map, we actually have to have a PSD of the background. Literally all you have to do, we'll just do it right now, is we'll just make our subject invisible. You just need a PSD of just your background. So we'll just go to file down to save as. Okay, and here in my images, I'm gonna just call this reflection background and this is gonna be a PSD. Well, just, you know what, I'm just gonna call this reflection. So this will be reflection.psd. Again, just make sure here where it says format, make sure it says Photoshop. That's gonna make a PSD file. Alrighty, we'll hit save there. Okay. So now that we have that reflection PSD, we can use that in our displacement map. So let's go ahead and grab our subject. I'm just gonna put our subject uh, visible for now. We got a little bit more work to make this perfect, but for now we'll just try it directly on our subject. So let's go to filter. We're gonna go down to distort and over to displace. Okay, so this is displace, also known as the displacement map. So let's click on displace. Now it's gonna ask you how you wanna scale this horizontally and vertically. So like a horizontal scale would be left and right, vertical would be top and bottom. Let's just do 10 and 10 to start with. We can always change this at any time. Now our displacement map, okay, you have a couple options. We're gonna choose stretch to fit, and then we're just gonna choose wrap around. Now these two options actually won't wind up being that important because we're gonna use a displacement map that literally covers our entire document, but Let's go with this for now and see how it looks. All right, we're gonna hit okay. Now it's gonna, as soon as you hit okay, it's gonna say, okay, where is your PSD? So we've already made that. So here it is, reflection.psd. It's just the background. It doesn't have to be fancy. It's literally just the background. So let's hit open. There we go. And we can see, in fact, we have some distortion. So let's hit just our little before and after. Here's the before and there's the after. And you can see our subject is in fact distorted. Now, we have a little issue that the distortion is happening, but it's not actually lined up with the photo that well. This kind of looks like it's being lined up with like maybe right there. So it actually didn't put it in the right place. Okay, so this is our little hurdle. Basically, because our background has transparency in it, like if I just make that invisible, there's a lot of transparent pixels on this. So it takes the layer size of what's actually on your layer and then it would compare the background PSD and try to like scale those two together. So my displacement map is not lining up perfectly with just my subject. So here's the workaround. We're just gonna hit undo real quick. All right, undo a couple times. So he's back to normal. You can see feet look like feet again. <laughs> We're just gonna create a new layer. So let's grab a, a solid color fill layer. We're gonna go to our adjustment layers here. 
We'll go to solid color. I'm just gonna go to white. We're gonna bring our opacity down a little bit. It doesn't really matter. I just wanna be able to see through it and we'll put that under our subject. So we have our subject, we have our solid color fill layer, and we have our background. Now, the layer with my subject, I'll just double click and call this subject here. I want this to be treated in Photoshop the same as this color fill layer. Like I want these layers to actually be like one layer and that is just gonna help with aligning everything size wise for my displacement map. But I need to be able to separate them out again. So what we're gonna do is turn these into a smart object. This is such a cool technique. And what we're gonna do is hold control or command. We're gonna click the two of those. Now we're gonna right click and we're gonna go to convert to smart object. Boop. So now this smart object is being treated like it's one thing. So instead of just my subject being on there with some transparency, now we have my entire document. So it's treated like one thing. Let's go ahead and try that displacement map one more time. We'll go to filter down to distort and over to displace. Okay, same settings here. We'll just pop open reflection.psd again and hit okay. There we go. And check this out. Now it's actually being displaced uh, you actually turn this displacement off and on, which is super cool. Other advantage of using smart objects, by the way. So now the displacement is working in the right place, which is fantastic. Now, how do you separate out the subject and the white background? Well, because this is a smart object, let's just zoom out here a little bit, okay? I can close down this original one, we don't need it. Because this is a smart object, if you wanna edit the contents of a smart object, all you have to do is double click on the thumbnail. So just double click there. It just opens up that smart object. You see, smart object. And I'm just gonna turn this layer off and hit Controller Command S for save, and we'll just close that out. So you can see here in my main document, let's turn our displacement back on. Here in our main document, that white background is now gone and the displacement map is in the right place. So that's all the technical stuff behind us. And don't worry if you like didn't like all of it because I'm about to do the same thing because we actually need to make the reflection now. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna hit undo a couple times. Let's hit full screen. I'm just gonna hit undo because I actually didn't want any of that stuff on my subject. We want it on a reflection because this whole video is called how to make a reflection. So we have our subject here. Let's go ahead and place our subject about where we want. And then to do the reflection, honestly, the easiest way to do this is to hit Control or Command J. That's just to duplicate. And we'll hit Control or Command T. We're gonna right click and go to flip vertical. So we'll just flip our, flip our subject vertical and then we'll just put you down there in the water. And we kind of want to match up like, you know, if this is like the, the point at which our subject would be floating there, uh, like match that up. Okay, and maybe our subject's a little bit large, so we can just make them a little bit smaller. There we go. So we have our subject here, and then we have our reflection. And I just want them to be about the same. Like you wouldn't want your reflection to be down here or like right here, because then it would look like it's above the water. So if it, you know, we'll just draw like a little line to help us out. If the, uh, there we go. If like the point at which your subject would touch the water is right here, you want the distance, uh, you know, uh, this distance to be about the same as this distance, okay? Doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to be about the same. All right, so let's just put that right about there. Okay, good deal. And we'll put it a little bit lower. So that looks pretty good to start this upside down version of our subject. We're gonna just double click and rename this to reflection. The next thing we want to do is just color a little bit of our reflection. So we're going to create a new layer. I'm going to hit B for the brush tool, and we're just going to sample some of this color here in the um, here in the lake. We're going to paint it right over top of our subject, or the reflection rather. Now I'm going to right click on this layer too, and we're going to just go to create a clipping mask. So it's only visible over top of that reflection. I'm gonna change this layer blend mode from normal down to hue. You could do color too if you wanted. Let's do color, I think that looks pretty good. Now, I'm not gonna have this visible all the way, but uh, I do want it to be a little bit of color. Just a little bit of coloring. There we go, I think that's starting to look good. 
And you don't have to do this coloring layer. In fact, let's lower it down a little bit. You can kind of look at the background, like the background you can see like a little bit more vibrant, you know, color here than it is here. Just like a little bit of a change. So you would want a little bit of a change, but nothing crazy. All right, we're gonna put this down to like 10% opacity. All right, and then I'm just gonna merge these together. So we just have our little color layer and our reflection. We'll just hit merge these together by hitting Control or Command E for merge. And we'll just call this reflection. So the reflection looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of color in it. It's in the right place and our subject looks pretty good at this point too. So we're ready to run our displacement map on the reflection. So we're gonna create a solid color fill layer underneath the reflection and then we're gonna put those together with a smart object. Then once we have our smart object, we're gonna run the displacement filter and use the displacement map that we created earlier. It's just a PSD of our background and that's gonna help it displace with the ripples in the water helping it to look more realistic. All right, let's do it. So for this, we just wanna make our subject invisible. We're gonna grab our solid color fill layer. We're just gonna to go to white, put it right under the reflection and just lower the opacity a little bit. There we go. And now here's where we wanna do our smart object. So we'll control or command, click these both layers, right click and go to convert to a smart object. So now we're ready to run our displacement map. So we're gonna go ahead and zoom in. We'll go to filter, down to distort, and over to displace. And now here are my settings. I'm gonna choose a horizontal scale of 20. This is gonna like scale it left and right, but it's not gonna vertical scale it so much. Let's just do like a two on the vertical scale. Now at this point, this is important. So we wanna click on tile, and we wanna to go to repeat edge pixels, and then uncheck embed file data in smart object. So 20, two, tile, and repeat edge pixels. Let's hit okay there. There we go, reflection.psd, let's hit okay. And check that out. It looks like the reflection itself in the water is affecting the subject's legs, which is so, so cool. Now, if you're like, this is incredible, you're right, it is incredible. If you wanna do this like a little bit more or less, just double click on your displacement filter and you can change these settings. Like if I did like a 30, here on my horizontal scale. Okay, we just open up the same thing. There we go. You're gonna see you get even more of a reflection. So you can kind of take some cues from, from the image itself. If I go, maybe I'll just do a five on a horizontal scale. There we go, hit okay there. You're gonna see we have still, it's interacting with our background just a little bit less. I think 25 actually, let's do something right about in the middle there. All right, there we have it. Now, our subject, remember, that's just like he's hanging out up here. And we gotta keep in mind that in our reflection, not only do we have the reflection, but we also have that white layer. So we can turn that off at any time. Just double click right here on your smart object, turn off this white layer here, close it out and just make sure to hit save when you're good to go. So now what we have is just the reflection right there in the water and it's being uh, affected by the water itself. So our subject floating above the water with her little reflection. Now I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of a blur to this. We're just gonna go to filter, blur. I'm gonna go to motion blur and just put like, a, we'll put zero, an angle of zero and just like a tiny bit of a motion blur in there. There we go. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of noise over top of this and my subject just to help it fit with this image. So to do that, if you wanna add a little bit of noise, it's actually really easy to do. I can just go to filter, uh, noise, there it is, and over to add noise. <laughs> there we go. We'll just add like a tiny bit of noise, like not a lot, because it looks horrible. Like 5% or like 2%, yeah, 2% looks pretty good. And then we'll do the same thing of our subject. So we'll just right click on our subject, uh, convert our subject to a smart object, and we'll just go to filter and add the same amount of noise. That is fantastic. So now we have our subject floating out over top of the lake with the reflection that's interacting with our environment. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna do this on your own, just remember these key steps. 
The first thing you wanna do is make sure you save your background out as a PSD. This is gonna be used later when it's time to load it in as a displacement map. Then go ahead and place your reflection in the area that you want and create a white layer underneath it. Go ahead and select both those layers and convert them into a smart object. This is gonna make sure it's treated as the exact same size as your displacement map so you won't have to try to line it up manually. Go ahead and run your displacement map on the smart object and then when you're done, you can tweak those settings if you want and you can double click right there on your smart object and just turn that white layer back off. This is gonna look like your environment is affecting the reflection. If you enjoyed this video, give us a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We'll send you a free Photoshop tutorial every single week. Thanks so much. I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone. Woo, we did it. You are floating buddy. Mr. Man, you are floating above that lake. Yes, you are. Okay.